Okay, perfect. Thank you, Christy. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, let me let me give you a quick. Well, first of all, welcome to to our live coding session today about uh, working with PHP on AWS uh, Lambdas with a serverless framework. Um, first of all, uh, I'm going to give you a quick introduction of what uh, Wiseline. And Wiseline Academy is. So my name is Jakob Rempeni. I'm a software engineer at Wiseline. And Wiseline is a software development and design services company with operations in the USA, Mexico, Vietnam, Thailand, Australia, and Spain, with six years of experience and more than a thousand employees worldwide. We started as a product company and gradually we migrated to services. We realized that we could help other high growth companies to build better, better products faster through our different disciplines, such as technical writing, UX design, project management, on all the engineering disciplines like SRE, QA, AI, mobile, and so on. Wiseline is a trusted ally of brands such as National Geographic, Fox Network, The Washington Post, and many more. As part of our culture, Wiseline empowers employees and the community to innovate and grow their careers. This is the reason why Wiseline Academy was created. Wiseline Academy is a platform that offers free educational programs such as workshops, talks, and certifications in today's most high value skills in technology, such as artificial intelligence, technical writing, software development, and so on. Stay tuned on social media, our Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn pages to learn about upcoming courses. As part of our commitment the community, to the community, we love to host awesome people who enjoy contributing to the industry. And today, uh, well, we're doing this, this special session for all of you. And, uh, oh, sorry. This is a map of where Wiseline works and where we have business. So it's, it's pretty awesome and impactful. And let me introduce ourselves. Uh, first, Roberto, go ahead, Roberto. Hi everyone, I'm, uh, this is Roberto. I am a software engineer at Wiseline. Uh, I work in the backend side and I love to apply a clean architecture and clean code in, in all the programming languages that I work. And I am a specialist uh, in PHP, Python and Java. And myself, uh, I already told you my name, Jakob, and I'm also a software engineer specialized in PHP, and I do a lot of work with uh, PHP, uh, JavaScript, and TypeScript, and lately a lot of blockchain. Uh, this is an agenda of what we will be going through today. Uh, we're going to go first over what serverless, well, first we're going to do a lot of uh, theoretical uh, information. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk a little about what serverless and lambda are. Then we're gonna go over breath, which will be our bridge between PHP and, and serverless with lambda. And then we're gonna go to the fun part. Roberto is gonna show us three ways we can work with these frameworks to create uh, applications in a very direct and practical way. So during the session, this is a, these are the rules we're gonna be following. Uh, Please identify yourself in Zoom, putting your name there and your last name. And mute your microphone during the course. Use the chat for questions during the Q&A sections. Focus your questions on the presented topic. And if you have problems with your connections, please turn up your camera. And always be respectful of everyone's ideas and questions. There are no bad questions and we can all learn from that. Uh, be welcoming and patient, and be careful in the words that you choose uh, for to to direct to other people. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm having a little issues. Give me a second, please. Uh, sorry. I think there we are. Okay, yeah, there we are. Okay. Uh, so we're gonna go first with serverless and AWS lambdas. 
the way the serverless paradigm works is that you pretty much have your code with the service provider, say AWS, Google Cloud, or Azure. And that code only gets executed when a trigger is activated. The provider instantly allocates the resources needed for the code to run and removes them as swiftly when these are not needed anymore. Triggers to activate the services can be HTTP requests, queuing services, monitoring alerts, file uploads, cron jobs, and events on the database like patches, inserts, deletes, and so on. Uh, the, the way the service is called varies from provider to provider. Uh, AWS calls them Lambda. Uh, Microsoft Azure calls them Azure Functions. And something similar happens with Google Cloud, which calls them Cloud Functions. Uh, this is a basic diagram of how it works. Uh, we have our triggers, or the things that wake up the, the, the service. As I mentioned, the different ways it can be done. And then the, the provider builds up the, the environment instantly and executes the, the code. It can also use other resources from the other end, like databases uh, or other storage uh, solutions, doing a, a messaging uh, process, like sending an SMS or sending an email or that kind of stuff. Uh, we also have some things to take into consideration about AWS Lambdas in particular. For example, the benefits can be that you, you can forget to manage uh, your server. You don't, you don't have to do any of that, either for the, for the environment or the server per se. You can do continuous scaling. That is all taken care of. Uh, you only pay for the compute time you use by my milliseconds. It means that you only pay for when the service is uh, awake. So, so you don't have to worry about the whole time you're not getting any requests or anything like that. And you can optimize your functions increasing memory by that way. Uh, we have benefits, but we also have some limitations. The memory allocation is from 128 megabytes to uh, 10 to 40 megabytes. Uh, and that is shared with all the Lambda invocations, not just one. The timeout is up to 900 seconds, which means 50 minutes. The environment variables can be only up to four kilobytes in size. Uh, the burst concurrency is from 500 to 3000, that's the limit. Invocation payload is six megabytes synchronous and 256 kilobytes synchronous. Uh, the code size with libraries, uh, first you upload a zip file and that can only be 50 megabytes in size. And once it's unzipped, it can only be 250 megabytes unzipped in size. And the temp directory, which you only use during the process usually, so it's not something that stays there, can only be up to 512 megabytes in size. Now, Bref. Bref is pretty much a full-blown helper to deploy your PHP code to AWS and run it on AWS Lambdas. Uh, so serverless is used by Brev uh, to configure and deploy the application. It's a tool with a huge community and popularity behind it. So documentation and examples are everywhere and usually very detailed. Now, we, uh, as with any tools, uh, Brev has also some limitations or disadvantages. It only works with AWS at the moment. Uh, and that's what the, this whole session is gonna consider. I, uh, there are some other possibilities in the future, at least in the roadmap, but right now we're only working with AWS. And the breath ping, which is very important to note for privacy uh, issues that you may see there, because for every invocation, breath sends a, a, a ping. Uh, uh, an, uh, a ping containing a breath invocation happen stream. And it's only for analyzing their tools on their end. But the, the, the thing we worry about is that this, this functionality is, is enabled by default. So you can disable it, but I, we think it's a little tricky that it is enabled by default, but it's something for you to consider. 
Uh, this is the BREF architecture. You have the, the possible runtimes and, and the whole library you can use for, the, for, for running it with PHP. And we have the tools that, come, what, that also come bundled into the, into the helper, which is monitoring uh, command line interface commands and the, the wizard to install it. With that, we can only use AWS as mentioned before, and then go into any AWS service that you want to use. As mentioned before, for example, if you use database, then you can also use, besides the lambdas, you can be calling a Dynamo service or something like that in AWS as well. So it's pretty helpful. And with that, uh, that's pretty much the boring part. We can go to with Roberto, so he can share and show us how to build this in a practical way. Uh, Roberto, the microphone is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, could you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. Uh, first, uh, we need to create um, a directory name first. Okay. And go inside it. First. For this example, we are going to create a simple REST API using Slim uh, and Breath. Slim I'm sorry, Roberto. Uh, it's in the chat. Can you help us increasing your font size a little so we can ah, read uh, yes. the, the code better? Thank you, Maro, for bringing okay. that up. Okay, it's fine. Is it fine? Yes. I see it better. If anyone needs that, yeah, it works perfect. Yeah. Thank you, Robert. Okay. Okay. Yes. Welcome. Uh, Slim PHP is called a micro framework because it doesn't have all the tools that Laravel, for example, has or Symfony. Uh, it's only for creating microservices in a light way. The first step is require the library using Composer with the following command. Composer, breath, slash, breath. Composer require. Okay, it, it doesn't matter if you, have a, if you have a Laravel application or something like that, it just uh, only for, for, require, for getting the library. <clears throat> uh, after downloading the dependency with Composer, we need to initialize our Brave application with this, with this command. Vendor bin Brave init. And this is the wizard. Uh, Breath provides uh, provide us two type of two types of lambda, lambdas: web application, event driven functions. The difference uh, between them are if you have a legacy apl applications or applications based on frameworks like Laravel, Symfony, and Framework, or Slim PHP, for example, in our case, the best option is to choose web application. If you want that the lambdas behavior uh, will be like a simple hosting provider, like Hostinger, for example, or GoDaddy, uh, with extra configuration, of course, you can choose web application too. In the other hand, if you want to create different functions uh, in AWS using lambdas that is triggered, for example, uh, for updating a record in a database, getting a message from message queue system, uh, activate a lot, an alert from CloudWatch, uh, execute a scheduler event, or create a Lambda for IoT, the best approach is to choose event-driven function. For a work case, we, we will choose the first option. Roberto, uh, we're having in the chat uh, uh, mm -hmm. a question. They have the option PHP function, HTTP application, or console application. They don't, they don't have it as you with web application. Do you know if there's an issue there or maybe something different? Uh, excuse me, I, I didn't understand the question. Uh, could you repeat me, please? Yeah, they have different uh, questions, different options. They have PHP function, HTTP application, and console application. And console application? Um, I don't know. Maybe I it's a different know. version of 
Aha, uh -huh, so maybe it's a different version. In our okay. case, we will use a brief uh, wine wine dot uh, two. Perfect. They solved it. Thank you, Robert. Yes. Sorry for the interrupting. No, no, no problem. And then uh, press enter. Brev will create uh, two, two files. The first one is the entry point of, of our Lambda. Uh, is in index PHP, is just an example. And the other is the configuration from serverless framework in serverless, uh, serverless YAML. And it's something like that. <clears throat> um, uh, what, what is the different components of our serverless application? The first one is our region. In our case, we will uh, change the region uh, in US East 2. Uh, the name is AWS because all the, all the configurations is from AWS um, cloud provider. We have the plugin uh, for Brev and we have different functions. Uh, you, could, you could put uh, as functions as you like. We have uh, the handler, in this case is index PHP, the description and the timeout. It's very important to, to know that uh, if you handle uh, by HTTP request, you only have uh, 30, 30 seconds at most because uh, the API gateway has this limitation instead of the 900 seconds that you have uh, with other, with other uh, Lambdas approaches. Um, our Lambda needs to have a layer can be executed on the cloud. In our case, uh, we have three different options. Uh, as we mentioned, a PHP, FPM, a PHP console, and PHP, uh, PHP uh, click. In our case, we only need to use uh, FPM. Uh, we, we could choose uh, by uh, PHP 7.2, 7.4 and PHP 8. The next part is the different events that it will be triggered by our Lambda. In our case is uh, by HTTP API. And the last part is, uh, is because uh, remember that you only, you only has uh, the limit of uh, 50 megabytes of your, of your zip file and you could exclude a uh, different different directories by the way and in our case we will exclude a uh, node modules and test and uh, we need to modify our composer json for a uh, requiring our slim application and it looks like that let me get the require okay and uh, we will use a slim php 4 and uh, with the plugin uh, psr 7 uh, 1 1 3 and we need to delete the composer lock and the vendor directory in order to recreate uh, all the all the um, all the libraries and we need to uh, we need to execute composer install prefer this <clears throat> and as you see we we have a slim php and we need to modify for a uh, for our uh, rest api approach we need to create a directory named public and inside public, we will put uh, the index file. And in our serverless, we need to modify to public index. Uh, <clears throat> and we need to modify uh, the code for index PHP, delete uh, this, uh, this approach. And we will use uh, this, this code. And let me let me explain. The first is to, is to get in the autoload, require the autoload, create the application from Slim, 
And after that, we will create only an, only an endpoint named hello. And we will uh, return, uh, return a response uh, in a JSON format. And last, for deploy our application, we will use the following command, serverless deploy. The deployment, uh, uh, keep in mind that the deployment takes a few minutes because uh, the frame, the frame, the serverless framework uh, will create all the, all the resources, zip the file, upload to S3, and after that, uh, after that, uh, create our Lambda function in AWS. <clears throat> First, a uh, 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 serverless, app, uh, serverless uh, framework, create our zip file in this, uh, in this directory, uh, dot serverless. This is our application. After that, our application will upload to S3 using cloud uh, formation. And after that, we will uh, create our, our REST API using Lambda. As you see, our code, uh, our, uh, our code size is one megabyte at the moment. Uh, the different uh, the different problems that you could have you could have in this approach is that you you don't have a a, be, a, a best uh, best provider or uh, you forget to put the layer. If you don't put the layer, you cannot use uh, this functionality in Brave. As you see, uh, our application is in the stage dev. Uh, our region is US two. Uh, and our endpoint is is like that, and our our function name is API, and API dev API, okay, and as and if you go to the uh, if you go to the Amazon console in the Lambda section, you could see the app dev API with the layer, with the layer uh, PHP 7.7.4 FPM and our trigger is by using API Gateway, as you see. Okay, and last, we could copy <clears throat> our Lambda, our, our endpoint and go to Postman and prove it. Um, let me check. Ah, the, the problem is that I, um, I need to Mm. Mm. Uh, wait me a second, please. Mm. Then point. Hello. I'm the server. Let's approach. This command is for remove our, our serverless. Uh, 
Uh, just a quick question, Roberto. Mm -hmm. where, do, where did you store the AWS credentials? Ah, uh, uh, serverless application uh, get, gets the um, the credentials uh, using AWS CLI. You need to you need to create, uh, install a AWS CLI before uh, install serverless. Okay, thank you. Yes. And deploy. This warning, for example, is uh, when uh, is uh, the thing that I that I told told you. Um, the the timeout uh, is up to thirty minutes, thirty seconds. Excuse me. Okay, copy over endpoint and prove in Postman. I don't know what happened. Let me check the problem in a bigger way. Let me check the server. Ah, 
Yeah, this, this, this is the problem. Uh, the public directory uh, put a, a <clears throat> inside, uh, put a, after the the first uh, the first directory. Excuse me for that problem. It's a typical error. Keep in mind <laughs> your your directory structure. <laughs> And we get the API. And we could uh, receive the message and the name from our REST API. And you could see uh, after the after the that endpoint, you could uh, create uh, different endpoints as you like. Our architecture is something like that. We we used a API, a API gateway and after that we will create a serverless application using the layer PHP 7.4 FPM. And that's all for our first approach. If you uh, remove your Lambda, you could uh, put the following command, serverless, remove. And that's all. For, the, uh, for our second example, we will create another directory named second. Second. In our example, we will create a command using Silly, Silly PHP. Silly is a library for creating comments in a, in a like way. It's like a Laravel Artisan or Symfony console, for example. Our command uh, will, send, uh, will send out emails, one per registered uh, user for a fake repository. We will use the following architecture. Mm. This is our architecture for this approach. You, uh, we will have a, a, a Lambda uh, with two layers. The first one is PHP 7.4 and the, the second one is the layer console, named console. And our Lambda use the uh, SES provider. Uh, it's an email sender from AWS to send uh, different emails. We need to, cre uh, we need to create our uh, composer.json with the following information. First, uh, we will use a uh, PHP 7, 7.2 or you could uh, avoid that. Uh, you, we will use Breath, Silly, uh, uh, the SDK from AWS, and .m for uh, for put the environment variables, and we will use PSR4 for our uh, auto load uh, from uh, the directory src, and after that we will put a a file name environment and our environment has the following 
information. The first one is our AWS, AWS key, the secret, and the region. The region is US, US East 2. And our email from, this is my email, emails to send, and emails to reply. And we need to create our repository. First, we need to create an SRC, SRC directory. After that, we put our repository file and it looks like this. Our rep repository file um, get, um, <clears throat> give us a simple a simple array. For these purposes, it's, it's just like a like a fake uh, repository. With our subject on our body, subject body, subject body, we could uh, send three emails, one per one per per object. After that, we will have our service. in a SRC to our service is only for using the ESES client, the version, the region uh, from, from environment variables, our key and our secret. And we only have a function named send. Send is for, uh, for send all these emails from our repository. And that's the code, the simple code for send that, that email, those emails. And last, we will have the index file. But first, we need to uh, download uh, our repository and create our ref application. Composer require, composer install, excuse me, install. Prepare this. Oh. Second. And over composer dot JSON. Valid JSON. Download our dependencies. Uh, our dependency is AWS um, and other dependencies. We have the composer log and we could create a, our ref application with the last command vendor bin ref in it. And we choose the second one, the event driven function. And as you see, we create uh, the serverless YAML with this layer and our index file. We will remove the content and we use this approach. First, uh, we have a uh, we have a uh, different uh, different AWS exceptions, our email repository, our email service, and uh, a component that uh, then upload our envir environment variables from our code. Uh, create our application and create a command. Our command is uh, name it, send emails, and get, uh, get all the information from the repositories, the email dummies, and uh, we only use a for each for, uh, for sending emails, by the way. And that's all. It's only uh, it's only a, a console. And for our, 
we need to modify the serverless YAML. The first one is to uh, put a EM role statements uh, for use the SES uh, service from AWS. We have the same plugin, Brev, and we have the, this uh, function, hello. But hello has two layers. The first one is PHP 7.4 7, and the layer from console. And our timeout uh, is uh, by 60, 60 seconds. And our handler is uh, inside our second directory named index.php. And exclude the test and environment example if you have. Okay, and first uh, we need to we need to check uh, if our if our function works fine in our local machine, and we put the following command: PHP index PHP send emails. Emails to send. I forgot to, to save the file. And as you see, we uh, send uh, different emails using, uh, using the AWS SDK. If you go to the inbox, we will have the three emails, okay? After that, we will deploy our application. Thank you. Okay, you know, in, in this case, our code, uh, we, uh, the size of our code is four megabytes. It's bigger than the first one. Remember, keep in mind that your your size is up to uh, fifty megabytes. Uh, in the in the case of the zip file, and when you upload uh, the the unzip, uh, must not be uh, more than uh, two two hundred and fifty megabytes. Okay. As you see, we deploy our functions, but without a, without an endpoint because it's only a console command layer. And for a, for testing our code, we could type vendor bin breath invoke uh, breath click, excuse me, app dev, hello, and we choose uh, the different region, 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 US, East, two, and the command after the index, the index, uh, the index uh, line. On this case, is send emails, send emails. And as you see, uh, our our uh, breath application uh, consume the consume the command uh, in AWS, and re and we receive the information from our lambda. And if you go in the inbox, we have the three different emails. 
Another, another way to, to test uh, this approach is using serverless by itself. On this case is the following, serverless invoke with F, the name of your the name of your function on this case is hello. And with using the option D, you could send different uh, different uh, strings. On this case is send emails. And you could receive the exit code. Remember that if you receive a, a, a number different than zero, is a, you have a, a problem with your, your, with your command. And if you receive zero, it's fine. And the, the output, the output, the three different emails. And that's all uh, in the second example. For our last example, is for creating uh, for creating um, for creating um, a consume for uh, for another uh, REST API, and after that, send the information by email. Uh, first, we need to create another another directory named third. And enter third. And the architecture looks like this. Um, let me get the architecture. Mm -hmm. The architecture is uh, we will use uh, the same the same uh, lambda with PHP uh, seven four and the console layers the two layers, this Lambda cons will consume our fake server and get user from, I don't know, from MySQL, Postgres or something like that. And after that, um, this uh, Lambda will send email using SES and uh, our Lambda uh, is triggered uh, using event, event bridge, uh, CloudWatch events for create like a cron uh, in the, on the cloud. The possible application for this approach are, for example, MessageQ's dispatchers, dispatch processes on background, a, a getting new data from database and recollect a different, a different data from different information sources, migrations, of course, and sending email queues, for example. We have for this approach the following Composer JSON. Based Composer JSON. In our case, we will use Bref, Silly2, AWS SDK, .m, and our, our best, uh, best library for, for consume uh, REST APIs, Gosol, of course. And we will put uh, our code in SRE2. And our code, it looks like this. The repository consume our, our JSON server for consume different users and get those users uh, with JSON the code. And in the other hand, our service is the same like the, like the other one. Send the, send the different emails with a different structure. And after that, uh, first we need to we need to download the, the libraries, create our Bref application, and after that, modify the index file and the serverless YAML. And composer install refer this. After we need to create our Bref application. Okay. 
vendor the breath in it and we choose a event driven event driven application okay <clears throat> or where index file looks like this Our application uh, create a common application like the other one and name consume rest. After that, uh, we create a we create our our structure template for uh, get all the all the users from our fake server. Uh, we uh, we get uh, the uh, the users, and after that we could uh, we could have a for each for uh, getting uh, the different the different information from the users and send the email and that's all if you if we have a problem we return one in in the other in the other ways we return zero and in the case of the serverless it looks like this We need uh, to to have a region US East two for this example. You could uh, choose uh, whatever you want, and we have a function named cron uh, with the handler index. Uh, you could put a description, and we have two layers instead of one. The first one is for uh, get the PHP seven four, and the second is for uh, having a console. And the event is a, is a new event named schedule. We could uh, put a rate, for example, uh, you could put a, every minute you could receive, uh, you could receive a, or consume the lambda. And what is the input? The input is consume rest because it's the, it's the name of the command. And that's all. We could We could deploy our application. Oh, um, <clears throat> in the in the meantime, that uh, that we upload our service, uh, we need to check our fake server. Our fake server looks like this. We could have users. If you put a, a slash user, you could receive three, three of them, a different, a different resources with name, last name, and age. And that's all. It's in our case of our REST API fake. And as you see, we need to delete the emails. The handler will be in the index PHP, of course. We will use a PHP and console layer. <clears throat> And uh, every minute uh, will be uh, will be receive uh, receive the email from the list of the users. Mm -hmm. And we need to wait for a minute in order to get the email.
Um, I, I have another mistake. I forgot to, to put the M file. We need to create a .m file um, with the following information. Excuse me for that. In, in this on this case uh, we we have a zip uh, uh, this, the size of our zip is four megabytes Okay, and that's all. If you if you check uh, the logs for your for your lambda, you could put the following command: serverless with the function cron serverless logs. And with the option T. And you could uh, check the log file like a tail in a, in a server. That's and, awesome. That's, that was one of the questions that the, the guest has. Okay. Thank and you. And last, uh, we have uh, the list of users from the, from the server. And every minute we will receive the list of the user from, uh, from our fake server. And last, and the last part uh, is an extra. Uh, uh, Brev provide us a live dashboard for checking our lambdas in AWS. There is with the following command. Vendor bin Brev and dashboard. And we could uh, we could choose our our region, and this is our cron. The name of our cron, the different consumes, the average. Uh, remember that the, the 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 duration of the lambda depends uh, how much uh, does it cost. And the errors if you have. The logs, the logs are is the same that, that the other. The different deployments that you have, 
uh, four minutes ago, uh, 70 minutes ago. Secrets, if you have a secrets, if you connect to other databases or RDS databases, queues and files and others. And that's all. And thank you guys. Awesome. And let me turn on my camera. Awesome. That's great. Cool. Yes, uh, uh, yes Osvaldo. Excuse me. Uh, yes, Osvaldo. The logs are the same uh, than CloudWatch. Excuse me. Excuse me for that. Uh, go ahead. Don't, don't worry, Robert. Thank you. Uh, let me share again my screen. Mm. First of all, thank you, Roberto. That was amazing. I really love this presentation, especially the dashboard always blows my mind. Mm -hmm. Let me... Okay, so we're pretty much uh, done with the, with the practical part and, and we're ready to take any questions you may have. Uh, I think I would rather have everyone write their questions on the chat and we can go in an orderly manner. And if Roberto needs more clarification of the question, then maybe you can turn on your, your microphone and whomever also wants to turn their camera is welcome to do so. So let's start. Does, uh, oh, well, actually we can start uh, first. Yeah, I'm gonna share that too. Christy is sharing with you a link in the chat for the feedback survey. You can also see it in the screen right now. Uh, please share, uh, please fill it. it. It's to help us improve how we do things and also to help improve the, the whole Wiseline Academy uh, department. So that'd be awesome. And uh, I have a couple questions that that you had shared before. And they are right here. Give me a second. So the lock part, I think it's uh, perfectly answered. And we don't need to go there. Uh, that was from Mauro. Uh, yeah, Chris Tolforo Gaspar asked, what are some strategies to deal with the cold start time? Uh, Roberto, they mean uh, when when the Lambda is uh, shut down, it, it was inactive. Uh, what's the, the best way to work with the, the time it takes for it to to build up again, the, the couple seconds? Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Um, the, the best approach for using Lambdas, of course, is, is uh, in different applications that you don't you don't consume a lot of amounts of RAM or a lot of a lot of time and that's the that's the main reason that you could use a, you could use a, a, an application using a, I don't know Laravel or using Lambda and if you a, the the approach for uh, the the approach in AWS is that uh, for every every trigger uh, the trigger uh, consume the the lambda uh, the lambda uh, the lambda uh, goes up and after that uh, consume the application and if you if you don't uh, receive any any handlers uh, from this lambda the lambda turn down. Okay, I don't know if, if that answers your question, Christopher. Okay, perfect. Uh, let me go up. Uh, there are a lot of questions. Give me a second. Uriel Contreras is asking the serverless YML file works with the same configuration as normal. My question is because I use ALB to trigger the functions, this should be possible, right? Yes. Uh, for example, if you if you go uh, to serverless.com uh, serverless.com framework, you could uh, have different examples 
uh, for different uh, for different um, for different programming languages like uh, like um, a JavaScript or something like that. And they they have uh, different configurations for different uh, parts of AWS components like SQS, for example, SNS or something like that, or S3, for example. Keep in mind that uh, in our case, uh, we use a little part of serverless using PHP and only use, using, uh, using AWS. For example, serverless uh, could provide us uh, different options for cloud for different cloud providers. It's like a, like a Kubernetes. If uh, you could uh, has a has a, a structure layer uh, in serverless uh, YAML, and uh, they create uh, different resources for different cloud providers. Okay, perfect. Uh... Now I have another question. Uh, can we can we host an entire Laravel application, and how convenient is that in cost cost terms? Um, yes, you you could uh, you could install a, a Laravel application, a, a Symfony application, a Slim application, or even a, even a send framework, for example. The limitation of this approach is the first one, uh, the size. And the second, that the processes that you have uh, don't consume a lot of amounts of RAM, for example, or consume a, 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 mount, um, a, lar a big amount of times, for example, more than 50 minutes. I don't imagine a process that, that that lasts a lot of amounts of time, but is the is the limitation of the lambdas approach. Okay, uh, I have, okay. We will add the readme file. Uh, no problem on that. Uh, what are some use cases where lambda functions was a solution you used as part of solving them? Um. Mm, um, the, the the best the best approach is when you when you uh, don't like or or you don't have um you don't have um you don't have resources resources in in case of people for administrate uh, different servers for example uh, lambda la, the lambda approach provide us a different a different uh, ways to solve to solve that and increase or decrease the amount of server that that we need as much as as the the handlers needed for for this approach is is better to to choose lambdas because you you could uh, take care with the with the resources of the servers by itself perfect okay uh, now, Roberto, for protecting against PTOS uh, or how to avoid uh, uh, the, the, the invoice increase when, mm. when it is going really fast. The, the Lambda itself uh, doesn't have any protection. Uh, remember that the Lambda is only a layer and put your code. But for example, if you have a Epi Gateway, the Epi Gateway layer, uh, the Epic Gateway layer uh, provide us uh, different uh, types of protection against DDoS attacks. Perfect. And I think that should also uh, answer your question, Carlos, about protecting the endpoints. Uh, can we use a router different than Slim, like Lumen or something like that? Yes. Yes, of course, you could uh, use different. Slim, for example, is, a, is, is the little baby uh, of Laravel. Uh, it's like a Slim PHP, it's the same. Okay. And it works. Uh, in our case, uh, we, uh, we could put uh, our code, for example, using a Slim, using Laravel, using, uh, using a Slim, Laravel, uh, or whatever you want. And you could, uh, you could check the different routings. Perfect. And, and okay. our framework administrate uh, our routings. 
Cool. Uh, are you limited to invoke only AWS services in the Lambda, or can you use the PHP SDK? Uh, like, for example, you can call it an Azure service from the Lambda or something like that. No, you you don't have any limitations. Uh, any limitations is you pay, but in the case of the free tier, uh, you have uh, some limitations. For example, you cannot uh, you cannot invoke more than three million. 3 million uh, resources or invokes uh, from the Lambda uh, for avoid uh, this free tier. Okay. Uh, Carlos, uh, I'm not sure if that really answered your questions about protecting or if you want to uh, go further uh, on the endpoint protection part. Yes, uh, it's, the, it's the same than the, than the other one, no? Yeah, I think so. I just wanted to I guess mm -hmm. API Gateway will be the best practice. Yes, yeah. of course, Very of much. course. Now, uh, and keep in mind that in the case of the API Gateway, uh, your uh, your uh, REST API cannot uh, last more than uh, more than thirty seconds. Keep in mind on that. Perfect. Okay. Uh, I think that's it. I don't know if there are any other questions or or anyone, there are a lot of thank yous. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, everyone. If you have any more questions. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's it. Uh, do you want to, I, I'm gonna say a couple of words, but I don't know if you want to say something first, Roberto, to say goodbye. Excuse me, please. Uh, I'm gonna say a few finishing words, but I don't know if you want to uh, to say goodbye first. If you want to say something or ah uh, yes, thank you, thank you everyone, and and um, have a nice day. Perfect. So thank you, uh, Roberto mentioned. Thank you everyone. Mm -hmm. Thank you PHP Mexico and PHP Jalisco uh, mm -hmm. for for helping us move this move this workshop around mm -hmm. and. Uh, please, please, please don't forget to fill mm -hmm. in the feedback form. It's very important. It's very and important for us for improving. Exactly. And also, as always, thank you, Wiseline and Wiseline Academy for having us and letting us share this, this kind of uh, sessions. Uh, I hope everyone has a, a fun Thursday, Friday, weekend, long weekend. In Mexico, we have a holiday on Monday. And hope to see you soon. Please keep in touch with the Wi-Fi Academy and social network pages to, to, be, to be alerted about new sessions and new events. Okay? Have a nice day, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you.